Hello, today we're looking at another group of the periodic table. This is group seven that's found here. And on the left-hand side of the screen there, you can see a list of some of the elements in group seven. The title or the name of the group is called the halogens. Halogens. And there are a few key points which we need to make sure we know about the halogens. The first one is that they are all non-metals. Um, not all solid though. Gas, uh, fluorine and chlorine are gases. Bromine is a liquid and Iodine is a solid, all at room temperature. Uh, they exist as pairs of atoms. So they don't exist as single atoms, they're in pairs. So we've got F2, SCl2, Br2, and I2. In other words, we've got two atoms that are joined together like this. That's how they exist in nature. And they are joined together by something called a covalent bond, which we'll look at very closely in an upcoming video. Next thing we need to know and remember is that they all have seven electrons in their outer shell. That's why they're called group seven. That's why they're in group seven, because they have seven electrons in the outer shell. And they can react with metals and they can react with non-metals. When they react with metals, what happens is an electron joins onto that outer shell. So the atom will gain one electron and that will give it a stable arrangement of atoms, just like a noble gas. When they react with non-metals, they share one pair of electrons. So they don't gain electrons, they share one pair of electrons and that will help to give it its stable arrangement. That's usually to do with covalent bonds. Okay, so five key things here that we've got to know and remember about the halogens. And the last thing to mention, which I forgot to mention at the beginning, is that they all have colored vapors. So fluorine is that pale yellow, chlorine is like a yellowy green, bromine is more like an orangey brown, and iodine is like a darkish purple vapor that they all have, which are characteristic for those elements. The next thing I want to look at is the way in which the halogens react and what we call displacement reactions. So here we have um, a list of those halogens, the group seven elements, and what we've got to remember is the order of reactivity. Fluorine there is very reactive, chlorine a little bit less, bromine a little bit less, and iodine even less so. So as you go down the group, they get less and less reactive. The top is the most reactive and the bottom is the least reactive. Now we can use that information to understand a sentence that I'm just about to put on the screen. Here we go. It says a more reactive halogen can displace a less reactive halogen from an aqueous solution of its salt. Now what does that mean? Well, firstly the word displace, you can see that uh, highlighted there. That word in this case means change, to change places with. And the next word that you might not be familiar with is this one here, aqueous. That means something that's dissolved in water. And in terms of salt, we're talking about salt as in science, as in chemistry. And there's a whole bunch of chemicals, but one example might be something called sodium chloride. But there are others, potassium chloride, potassium bromide, and so on. And you'll get familiar with those as we do some of these questions. So what does this, what does this exactly mean? Let's have a look at a little animation to help us understand. Here we have a reaction going on, and it's between potassium bromide and chlorine. And the blue background there is to show that it's all in solution. It's all in water. Now, if we look at the list on the left-hand side, we can see the order of uh, the elements. And we know that chlorine is more reactive than bromine. It's called bromide when it's in a compound because it's higher up, chlorine is higher up in the uh, table. So what happens is the chlorine will displace the bromide. So all the chlorines will replace the bromide, which will then become bromine gas. And this is our displacement reaction. So this is how it works. We can write a word equation. So we've got potassium bromide plus chlorine becomes potassium chloride plus bromine. Uh, it's worth noting that the chlorine, when it reacts or displaces the bromine, it becomes chloride, so it's potassium chloride, and the bromide, when it's in the compound, when it comes out or is displaced, becomes bromine, which is the molecule. Okay, so uh, that's two examples, so that's one example. We can look at a second example uh, of a similar reaction, and this time it's between potassium bromide and iodine. So which one's more reactive? Bromide is higher up, so it's more reactive than the iodine. So what's gonna happen in this scenario? Well. We are in solution as well, but we're not going to actually get displacement because if you look on the periodic table there, bromine is more reactive. So we get potassium bromide plus iodine is potassium bromide plus iodine. There's actually no reaction. There's no change there. So in this way, we can work out when a displacement reaction happens or not. And what it might be worth doing now is having a go 
at a couple of examples. So here we've got a table with some salts and our halogens. So the way it works is that down the left hand column there, in fact we can write it up here, these are the halogens going downwards and going across. These are some examples of some salts. So what are we doing? Well, if we look at this box here, potassium bromide reacting with chlorine, we can write down whether there's a reaction or not. And we've done this one already. So we get potassium chloride and bromine. Might be worth pausing here. Have a go, have a go at this yourself and see what you come up with. So here we go. The first one is the answer is potassium chloride and iodine because the chlorine will displace the iodine because it's more reactive and it's higher up in group seven. For the next one, bromine with potassium iodide, the answer there is potassium bromide and iodine. And this is because bromine is more reactive than iodine. And for these last ones here, we actually have no reaction for the last three because the salt already has the more reactive halogen.